good afternoon subscribers. So today I'm going to carry on with the next in the series with regard to short run Phillips curve, long run Phillips curve, specifically focusing today on this whole notion of money illusion. A money illusion is of course the primary reason why we end up or certainly in the case of the classical economic scenario, this is the primary reason why we end up uh, being able to move for a short period of time away from the natural rate of unemployment, level of output, YN, to the level shown by point B here, which is of course a lower level of unemployment and a higher level of employment. But of course, as we've said in the previous video, this movement from A to B, so if we say this is A at the natural rate, this movement from A to B, as we've said, this is only a short run scenario. And in the long run, what happens is that we will end up moving from B back to point C and having the same level of output, the same level of unemployment, the only difference being that rather than having, in this instance, no inflation, now we've moved it up and ratcheted that up to 5%. And we talked in the previous video, and if you didn't see that one, I suggest you watch that one before this one. We talked in the previous video about the way in which uh, further and further attempts by the government or the monetary authorities, according to classical theory, further attempts to stimulate the economy and to grow the economy will simply lead to higher and higher levels of inflation. And so what I want to do today is to simply explain how this point B represents this whole notion of money illusion and why it only lasts for a very short period of time. And of course we then went on to explain in our previous video if economic agents start to predict and anticipate these changes then actually you'll not even get this trade-off up the short run curves because all you'll have all that will happen is you'll end up going from A to C and we carry the line straight up and of course you get your perfectly inelastic supply curve. Okay so why does point B represent money illusion? Well in order to illustrate that and to indicate that we need to be looking at our labour market diagram because you already know how important the labour market diagram and the flex in that market, how important that is with regard to determining the shape of the long run Phillips curve or the classical aggregate supply curve. But let's just consider, in order for output to be at point B, so if we say that's YB, we would then need obviously a higher number of workers supplying their labour into the labour market. So if we continue this line down from our real economy to the labour market, in order for YB level of output to be produced, we would really need QB amount of workers. And for QB amount of workers to supply their labour, we would need to be operating at this point on the supply curve. Now, Let's take that across to our y-axis and let's have a consideration as to the level and the significance of that real wage. So we'll call this, let's call it uh, WB. So you can see, first of all, that this, rate, uh, this real wage, the rate WB is higher than the equilibrium W star. So workers will supply more labour if they have a wage rate which is in excess of the equilibrium. Now of course that is the case and you know that, that's why and that is how we use these labour market diagrams to show what happens to the supply and demand of labour whenever the real wage changes. But for more labour to be supplied a higher real wage needs to be offered and so when we move from point A to point B, workers, for some reason or another, they are believing that actually their real wages are rising and so there's more labour being supplied into the marketplace. Well, of course, this is not the case at all. And in the short run, these workers, they will eventually twig, they will eventually realise that actually 
their real wage has not gone up because if the inflation rate is going up, remember the real wage is W over P, that's the real wage in its entirety, if the inflation rate is going up and the money wage remains the same, then obviously the whole value of the real wage is actually falling. And so actually, rather than being at this higher real wage, the worker's real wage in essence is actually falling to, let's call it then, WC. Now once workers realise that this is the case, and they realise that in this instance inflation is 5%, then in order for equilibrium to be restored in the market, they will bid for a rise in the wage of 5%. Now of course in classical theory, we're told that these markets will, this adjustment will take place, be it upwards or downwards, and so equilibrium is then restored back to output level Q star, or employment level, I suppose we could say Q star in the labour market, which is then equivalent once again to YN, the natural rate of unemployment level of output in the real economy. And so that, ladies and gentlemen, is what we mean by money illusion. In the short term, workers believe that their real wages are rising, probably because uh, money is being pumped into the economy in order to try and expand the economy. And as a consequence of that, more labour is supplied. However, when they realise that actually, no, we're not at WB, no, 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 we're actually at WC. Then they realise, all right, well, in order to uh, restore my purchasing power at the end of this period to what it was at the beginning of the period, I need to ask for, I need to bid for, I need my employer to give me a 5% wage rise in this instance. Money wages are bid up. We end up back at equilibrium, Q star, equivalent to YN. And so we move to point C after this period of money illusion where we are now operating on the short run Phillips curve 2. And that, ladies and gentlemen, is the whole notion of money illusion. That's it for now. See you next time.